the Jim Quell. One of the best looking gyms that was developed from one of the coolest and best gyms around. And as we all know, this sexy beast was introduced to the world at the end of Gundam 0083 when the Titans were formed. Or was it? For years, I was under the impression that the Jim Quell that we have all come to know and love was the machine that we saw at the end of 0083. But with the release of the high quality Blu-rays, I suddenly realized that something was off. Those machines on the trailers were not Jim Quells, or at least not the ones that we always see displayed in manga, video games, model kits or action figures. And now before we more closely examine the difference between the thing we saw in the anime and everything else, let's first go over some possible explanations as to why they're different. Just keep in mind that none of these are official, because as far as I know, the official word is that this thing is the Jim Quell. My first theory is that some kind of mix-up happened between the folks in charge of the line art and the folks in charge of making the cells for the anime. There were possibly two designs of the Jim Quell flying around the office and the animators went with the wrong one and nobody noticed. Alternatively, because it was one of the final scenes, there could have been a time crunch that then led to some cost and time saving decisions. Rather than redrawing the Jim Quell scene from scratch, they traced some cells they had already made and then made some adjustments to them to make them match the Jim Quell. However, in their rush, they made a few mistakes that then went unnoticed. My final theory then, and one that I'll be using for my personal headcanon, is that this is an early production model of the Jim Quell. This version was then later on refined into the regular Jim Quell based on pilot feedback. So that's why for convenience, I will now be referring to this thing as the Jim Quell early type. So let's go ahead and overanalyze this one screenshot of the anime. The first big difference that made me realize that we weren't dealing with the regular Jim Quell were the legs. On the knees of the Jim Custom, there were thrusters that were no longer present on the Jim Quell. However, on this early type, we can see that they're still present. Considering the fact that the Jim Quell was a development from the Custom, it would make sense that in an early production version, they'd still be there. Perhaps later developments made them redundant, or it was deemed that the benefit they offered wasn't worth the cost and was therefore scrapped in the final production version. What we can see though is if they already implemented the other big difference between the legs of the Custom and the Quell. On the bottom of the Jim Custom's legs there was simply an indentation, whereas on the Jim Quell there's a sensor there to aid with its situational awareness, or in other words, to aid it in quelling protests. And the thing with the early type is that, due to the angle it appears on screen, I can say for certain if there's a sensor there or not. It looks kinda green, but that could just be a coloring effect to show depth as well. Personally, I like to think that at this point in time they simply kept the customs legs and that the extra sensors were added later on based on their early encounters. One thing they did add to this early production version though was an extra subthruster on the outer side of the legs. On both the Jim Quell and the Jim Custom, these subthrusters are only on the inner side of the legs, but as you can see on the early type in the back, it's now also got them on the outside. And it's even possible that there's an extra one on the back side as well, similar to the configuration used on the Jim High Mobility type and the Jim Sniper 3. The second thing I noticed then were that the arms were very reminiscent of those of the Jim Type C. We can see the joint motors on the elbows that aren't there on the Jim Quell, and we also have the detailing that is very reminiscent of the Jim Type C. However, it doesn't seem to be taken straight up from the Type C either. Near the lower end is a line cutting through, which could hint at a more mobile wrist and in turn an early version of the movable frame technology that we know was first tested out on the arms of the Jim Quell. And another thing that we know about the Jim Quell is that the Titans wanted to make it easier to mass produce, so it would make sense that they tried to use some parts of the Type C to achieve this goal. And we get some more Type C parts for the face. 
Now, for the most part, it's got the standard Jim Quell face, but the big difference is in the mouth section. On the final production version, it's got an indentation, but on this early type, just like the Type C, it protrudes. The final important difference then is that the cockpit hatch is slightly different. It's got a more angular edge rather than the more rounded one seen on the final production version, and it's also got two indentations that are no longer present on the final production version. And just as with the previously mentioned differences, it's got a bit of a Type C vibe going on. And then the really last difference is that the front skirts on the early type are completely black instead of being black and blue. And those have been all of the differences between the early type and the final production version of the Jim Quell. To me, it seems like this early type was still quite close to the Jim Custom, with more of a focus on performance, whereas the final production version was streamlined, made more cost effective, and also more adept at quelling. Let me know what you think down below, and also let me know if you ever noticed that the animated Jim Quells were different from basically every other Jim Quell. I noticed it a while back, but I never saw anyone talking about it, so that's why I decided to make this video. Anyways, that has been all for this overanalyzation of the Jim Quell early type, or the 0083 animated version if you prefer. Be sure to like and subscribe for more similar content in the future, and as always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters, I hope everyone watching has a great day, and I'll see you all next time.